Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you to the Acts Ministry Podcast. I'm so excited that you are listening and are tuned in. This is our very first week of programming on the Acts Podcast. After leaving 102.5 FM because of the radio station change of program. Because we were on 102.5 FM for over a decade, many of our listeners do not know that we have this podcast. So I pray you will partner with us and help us get the word out to let them know we have this podcast every day, Monday through Friday at the same time. Well, it's that time again for our most favorite time of the day. Time to study the Word of God together. Open your Bibles and your hearts, and let's see what God will say to us as we study His Word together. Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Our study time today will be spent in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, and we're going to look at verse 41 and build on that. Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. It says, and they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there was added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls were added unto uh, the church here in Acts chapter 2. It was the infant church. It was the church that started on the day of Pentecost, This is the day of Pentecost when Peter preached his message on the day of Pentecost, repentance and baptism. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises unto you, to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I want to focus on the 3,000 that came on this day, 3,000. That is a large baptismal service, 3,000 people at one time. Now, we've been talking about looking at, coming up with solutions to this oxymoron, this great contradiction that we see in our culture on Easter Sunday. When we look here, there was 3,000 people that gave heed to the word of God and that came to be baptized by the apostles. The thing that we need to look at is the context, what has been happening the last 50 days. There's something that has been going on the last 50 days that that gives heed, gives uh, understanding to these 3,000 souls that, that came at one time to be baptized. What we have to look at is that what has been happening the last 50 days. Well, Jesus had been resurrected, and 40 days after that, he was on the planet talking, teaching, showing himself to different people, showed himself to the disciples at least three times. And we can see that at least seven times he showed himself to different individuals And at one time, it was over 500 men at one time. So Jesus was very busy the 40 days after his resurrection. Not busy doing miracles, but busy talking about the kingdom of God, teaching about the kingdom of God, about making sure they got it. And that's one thing I think that we have to take time and just stop. One of the major things the Lord was doing during these 40 days that I call forgotten history, he was making sure that what he had taught them 
for those three and a half years, they got it. Because after he died, then the disciples, they went back to doing what they was doing, back in the hiding, trying to wait until everything blew over. And they didn't believe what he had constantly told them the three and a half years he was with them. He was going to be crucified and he was going to be resurrected. And they were so blown out the water when he got crucified that they forgot to look for the resurrection. So it was 40 days that Jesus stayed after the resurrection. Because, brothers and sisters, think about it. These 3,000 wouldn't have happened if he hadn't stayed those 40 days because the disciples had gone into hiding. They didn't even believe that he was resurrected even when they was told. So you wouldn't have had this incredible day that happened if the Lord hadn't stayed 40 days to make sure they got it right, make sure they understood and open their understanding. So not only was it 40 days that he spent, then there's 10 days left. That's, that makes the 50th day or penta, Pentecost. That's all it means. That's what Pentecost means, 50th. That's it. It doesn't refer to, in the text, it doesn't refer to denomination or church. It's talking about a feast day that God had instituted in the book of Exodus, way back in the Old Testament. The Bible says here that it came, it, it came to pass when it had fully come, when the day had been fulfilled, the prophecy, the day, the commandment had been fulfilled. Instead of writing it on tables of stone, now the word of God is inside the believers. It is written on their hearts. So 3,000 people came and they were added or they were baptized. Can you imagine that? Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, Text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. When the day had been fulfilled, the prophecy, the day, the commandment had been fulfilled. Instead of writing it on tables of stone, now the word of God is inside the believers. It is written on their hearts. So 3,000 people came and they were added or they were baptized. Can you imagine that? 3,000 of them. It says the ones that received his word. If they received this word gladly, they obeyed. And it says it was 3,000 that were baptized. But 50 days before this, there were some incredible things that had happened to get ready for this day. Some incredible things that had happened that you have this kind of magnitude of outpouring of the spirit of the living God. Souls coming this day. Those days after Christ was on the earth for 40 days, then we see the disciples, they were in prayer. They stayed at Jerusalem and waited in prayer and fasting and seeking God. The climate was right. The mood was set for a miraculous move of God, for a display of God's power. I believe, I believe the resurrection was so fresh because they had been seeing it 40 days after it had happened. They had the women telling them about it. They had seen Jesus uh, a few times, the apostles. They, they, they had seen all of this. So now they're living what I call in that resurrection moment because resurrection is not, and I repeat again, that it is not a event or time. That's a huge mistake. And I think if we correct that mistake, then we start correcting that contradiction we see every year. What do you mean it's a huge mistake? Well, it's what Martha said. When Jesus told Martha that Lazarus would rise again in St. John chapter 11, then Martha said to Jesus, I know he will in the last day or in the resurrection in the last day. So she had tremendous confidence that what the word of God had said was going to come to pass. She said, yes, I know he's going to rise again 
in the last day in the resurrection. So she gave them an event and a time. The event is the resurrection, and the time was last days. And then it's what Jesus said to her that changed everything. And what Jesus said to her, I think we have to go back and meditate on that and let that change us. Let us see the power of his words. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. Now, if I could be, if, if I could really put this in proper perspective uh, and, and, and not, not in theological terms, it, it is as if Jesus is saying, if he were talking to us today, he is saying, I am Easter or I am Passover. It is said that in 1 Corinthians chapter number 5, Jesus says, the Bible says, Jesus is our Passover. Christ is our Passover. 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 Stop being an event. It stopped being a time of the year. And it became what it what it was always meant to be. A person. Person. Jesus is our Passover. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. It's not an event. It's not a time in the future. It's a person. And if the resurrection is a person, and he says that we are to be in him, that means we are to be in the resurrection because Jesus is the resurrection. So if I'm in Jesus, I'm in the resurrection. That means that the resurrection is not an event or a time. It's not past tense. It's not in the past. It is not in the future. It's always now. Always now. So if I am in him, I am in the resurrection, then the power of the resurrection. And that's why if, if we don't get this, then we don't quite understand the kind of veracity that Jesus spoke with and he taught with, the boldness. When he says to the believers in St. Mark chapter 11, verse 23, when he says, Verily, or amen, or I tell you the truth, I say unto you that whosoever shall... Say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. Shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Now that scripture is hard to digest. It is hard to believe unless we believe in the resurrection. It is hard to manifest that scripture if we don't have the resurrection living in us and we living in the resurrection because Jesus just told us that we could speak to a mountain and he said he gave us stipulations if we believe if we didn't doubt in our heart then he says that that mountain would move now we understand having 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 knowledge of God's word he says we can only ask for things that are his will. We understand that. But he says the, that mountain, whether it's mountain of sickness, mountain of debt, mountain of trouble, whatever the mountain is, we can speak to it according to his will. Now, you, you, you can't go out and speak to Mount Pinnacle because you just don't like the way it look. That's not what he's saying. He's saying to us that that mountain that is in your way, that there's a purpose for it. There's a reason that you want it moved. And he said, you can speak to it. We'll never understand that. And it will never manifest in our lives. Until we live in the resurrection moment. Because that's what Paul is talking about. That I may experience the power of the resurrection. The power of it. That same power that got Jesus out of the grave. Is the same power that says, speak to the mouth. Now, if I believe that that same power that resurrected Lord Jesus Christ lives in me, it doesn't become hard or difficult for me to believe that I can speak to my mountains and expect them to move, to be gone. I want you to stay tuned, and I'm excited about our podcast, and we're going to give you even more instructions in the days to come, and we're going to be able to serve you even better. So God bless you until next time. For mobile giving, 
text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 England Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart.